Fish keeping is an absolutely amazing hobby that has definitely changed my life and you won't find me saying too many things bad about it. But unfortunately, there are some fish that we find in this hobby that absolutely should not be kept in aquariums. Understand that we're gonna talk about some fish on this list that are gonna be some of my favorites. They're fish that I've kept and I probably will keep in the future. You've probably had some too. The reason we're saying these fish shouldn't be in the hobby is because the majority of the people that buy them are ill-equipped to keep them, which leads to a miserable life for the fish and most likely an early death. These are fish that should only be kept by the advanced fish keepers because they're the ones that are dedicated enough to ensure that the fish's needs are met and in most cases, the tank is big enough to support them. Now with all that said, here are 10 fish that should not be in the aquarium hobby. It's no secret that arowanas are my favorite aquarium fish. It's the fish that got me interested in this hobby. It always has been and always will be my favorite fish to keep. Unfortunately, the overwhelming majority of people that buy this fish have no idea of how big they get and how destructive they can be. Silver arowanas are from the Amazon and in the wild, these fish can get up to four feet long. Now, I've never seen one that big in an aquarium, but I've seen them over three feet. And in fact, I had one close to three feet back in 2012. He died on Father's Day and it wasn't because he was sick or killed by another fish. No, this fish died for the second reason why arowanas should not be in this hobby. Arowanas are big time jumpers. There are videos on YouTube of these fish jumping completely out of the water to snipe an insect off of a branch. It's kind of a, it's a cool thing. They coil up almost like a snake and they strike. It's unbelievable, but it's also unbelievable on aquarium lids. Most fish keepers don't put a whole lot of attention onto the lids on their aquarium. They just assume that because the aquarium is covered, they're okay. Well, my arowana was in a tank with quarter inch thick glass canopy lids. These lids had a brick on top of them to weigh them down because I knew arowanas were big time jumpers. Well, Sully coiled up like a snake and struck and actually broke that quarter inch thick lid, sending the brick down into the tank and he went out of it. Monsters Inc. was a really popular movie and I named him after Sully, I don't know. So when Lisa got up that day, she found Sully laying on the floor hard as a brick. It was a great way to start off Father's Day. Arowanas are an absolutely majestic fish. They are fascinating to watch and will always be my favorite fish in this hobby. But unfortunately, most people don't have an aquarium big enough to fit these fish or lids big enough to contain them. They've been my favorite fish since the beginning. I had mine in an eight foot long tank and I still wasn't equipped to keep them. So they had to go on the list. The Paku is a fish that a lot of people get confused with the Piranha. Even though they're related and they look very similar when they're small, they couldn't be any more different. Piranha are illegal in many states, including Virginia. And the reason is pretty obvious. If you haven't already watched the movie, then maybe you should. Piranha are a schooling fish and they will absolutely terrorize anything that you put in the tank with them. Now, if you put one in by itself, you're gonna notice they're pretty boring. They don't do anything but just kind of do nothing. Since piranha are illegal in many states, there really isn't any reason to spend any more time on them. Paku are much more common, and when people see them, they actually think they're piranha. When they're small, they're kind of cute and everything, but when they grow up, they're big and they're like giant. Paku are nowhere near as destructive or aggressive as a piranha, but the reason why they're on this list is because of how large they do get. They can get as large as three feet and even 90 pounds. That's a whopper. 
Like so many of the fish on this list, many fish keepers are not equipped to have them. If you don't plan on moving them up into a large pond or a tank with several hundred gallons, then you might want to just stay clear of them. The common Placostomus is a fish that is bought by tons of fish keepers, usually for the wrong reasons. They have no idea what these fish are going to turn into. They go into the fish store and they say to the employee, my algae in my aquarium is out of control and I need a fish to help with that. And unfortunately, the employee at the store doesn't usually ask the proper questions to that fish keeper to make sure they have a tank suitable for these fish. The truth is there are plecos that will be fine in smaller aquariums and yes, they will help with algae control, but the common pleco is not one of them. These fish can get up to 24 inches and I've even heard stories of them getting bigger. Most people's aquariums can't handle a fish that big. So what ends up happening? Well, some people will take the fish back to the pet store where they bought them. And sometimes the fish store will take them in, but sometimes they won't because they know that they're gonna have a very difficult time getting rid of an 18 to 24 inch fish. Most people aren't looking for something like that. So what do they do if they can't drop it off at the pet store? Well, what some people do is the worst thing you could possibly do, which is release them into the wild. They drop them off in a pond or a lake or a river and they just say, you know what? They're gonna live a better life than if they were in my little aquarium at home. Now, this might not seem like that big of a deal, but if you wanna see how big of a deal it is, take a look at Steve Poland's video that he did a few months back. It will absolutely blow your mind. Yes, putting a fish in the wild can have a whole lot greater impact than you think it does. I'd rather see the common Placostomus just completely out of the hobby than to see them get mistreated or see them overtake rivers and lakes down in Florida. It's just not worth it. Every single person, whether you're young or you're old, your first reaction when you see a lionfish is gonna be, wow. They're amazing fish and they look like they're from another planet, but there's more to them than their really cool looks. They can really pack a punch. A lot of the fish that we've been talking about are on this list because of the size aquarium they're in and how much larger they get. But that's not necessarily the case with the lionfish, even though I'm sure there are some in some tiny tanks. Unfortunately, it's the nature of the industry. With lionfish, the problem is much more serious. They can actually send you to the hospital. Yeah, the hospital. Lionfish have venomous spines all over their body that can ruin your day if you ever touch them. Now, I've never heard of anyone getting killed by a lionfish, but I'm sure there's some pretty crazy stories out there. The other issue is there's been a ton of ignorant fish keepers out there that have actually released these fish back into the ocean. And you might think, well, how can a hobbyist ruin an entire ocean? Well, all you've got to do is a simple Google search and you would be shocked at what you find. They even have competitions where divers compete to catch and kill the most lionfish. That's insane. Okay, you're a fish keeper who's into fish enough to sit down and watch videos on YouTube all about them. So I'm assuming you've seen the show River Monsters with Zeb Hogan. If you haven't, you should. Well, if there's a fish that's been on that show multiple times, you know that fish has no business being in aquariums. Arapaimas are one of the largest freshwater fish in the world. That's really all that needs to be said. Okay, I'll say a little bit more. Depending on what article you read, Arapaimas can get from 8 to 13 feet long in the wild. Yes, I said 8 to 13 feet long. Most backyard swimming pools can't accommodate one of these beasts. Look, I, I'm not gonna go on and on. Housing an arapaima in a glass box is one of the most ridiculous things I've ever heard. That's it. I know we sound like a broken record because so many of these fish are on the list for the same reason, and that's because of how large they get. Well, the tiger shovelnose catfish is no different. 
This is another fish that new fish keepers find very attractive. They get caught up in their stunning appearance and how neat they look and all that whatever, and, but they don't realize how big they actually get. Tiger shovelnose will literally eat anything that they can put in their mouth, and that's why they grow so fast. They can get as large as 12 to 14 inches in the very first year. Did you know if they reach their full growth potential, they can get as big as three feet long? I mean, that's a second grader. I mean, really, that's a large fish. We had someone tell us once, I really don't like tiger shovel nose catfish. I mean, they're pretty, but all they really do is just sit around. Well, unfortunately this is true, but the reason they can't swim around is because they're stuck. The tank is too small. Plus they are nocturnal, so. Mm. I've got a question for you. How many friends do you have that have a 1,000 gallon aquarium? Now I'm willing to bet that if I'm lucky and 100,000 people watch this video, there might be three or four people that answer yes to that question. So if I'm right, only three or four out of 100,000 people have an aquarium large enough to handle a red tail catfish. This is one of those fish that so many people see in, a, in the fish store and they're these little things and they go, oh, those are so cute, but they have no idea how big these fish can get. Forget about how long they can get. These fish can get up to 350 pounds. I live in the United States and if there's one thing I'm certain of is that we're dealing with a pretty big obesity problem here in this country. And if I polled those 100,000 people and ask them how many of you weigh 350 pounds or more. I'd be willing to bet five, 600 of those people would answer yes. So I'm talking to those people now, those people that answered yes to weighing 350 pounds or more. I want you to take a look at your 55 gallon aquarium and I want you to imagine yourself crammed in to that little box. I'm not trying to be mean here. I'm certainly not a skinny guy myself. All I'm saying is, if there's a fish that has the potential to reach 350 pounds, it has no business being in your little glass box in your living room. In my opinion, glowfish are doing no good for this hobby, but it's probably not for the reason you're thinking. But hear me out. I'll start to make my point by asking you one question. How many adults do you know that own a glowfish? I mean, I've never met one, so I would bet your answer is zero, but who knows, you know, you might have one of those friends that never grew up, whatever. Glowfish are made, and yes, I said made, to specifically attract kids. Now, don't take me the wrong way. I'm not against kids getting involved in the hobby. I actually encourage it. I think it's an awesome thing but parents need to be involved and they need to keep an eye on their kids and the fish. But let's be realistic, most parents aren't going to do that. All they're gonna do is go out and buy that fish for their child, whether it's a glow fish or whatever other fish that child wants, they're gonna set it up, they're gonna give them hopefully everything they need, but then they're gonna leave it up to the child to take care of that fish. And we know how that story ends. Between John and I, we have five kids and one grandchild, so I'm not against kids. It's just I know how kids are, especially when they're young. Glowfish are really neat, but if they're just going to get bought and forgot about by the parents, then it's probably best that they're not even available at all. Okay, I know this one might be a little silly, but I've been keeping fish for a long time, and I can remember like it was yesterday, when snakeheads were a really big thing. Most states have already banned this fish from being sold in the aquarium hobby, so if you're brand new to this, you probably don't even know what I'm talking about. This is a long fish that has a head that looks kind of like a snake, hence the name. The reason we're talking about snakeheads is because they are a perfect example of what can happen when somebody gets interested in a fish, they buy it, they put it in an aquarium that it shouldn't be in, they kind of lose interest in it after a while, and they release it into the wild. In the late 90s, early 2000s, you couldn't turn on the news without hearing about the deadly snakehead invasion that was destroying the world. They would warn you about these mutant fish that are coming up out of the water and crawling across land, going from one pond 
to another, devouring anything in their path, even small children and small pets. This area was in a panic. You think I'm kidding? A Maryland man now holds the state record for catching the biggest snakehead fish. It is just shy of 18 pounds. If you catch one, do not put your hand in their mouth. Now, there's a new invader on the block. A ferocious fish with a massive appetite and razor sharp teeth. It may even walk on land. The snakehead. The snakehead was first seen here at this pond in Crofton, one that can walk on land and breathe out of water. Okay, yes, it's true. The fish can survive out of water for a little bit. And the way they're squirming on the land makes it look like they're going somewhere with an agenda. But, I mean, come on. You have no idea how big of a deal this was. They found some snakeheads in a pond in Northern Virginia and also one in Maryland. And it just absolutely set this area into an uproar. There were people, they made movies about it. It, it was a panic that could only be rivaled by the 21 days that this area was under siege by the DC sniper. Other than that, this one took the cake. It was unbelievable. Just Google it, snakeheads in Maryland. It'll blow your mind. So pay close attention to the fish that you're buying. If you don't have a system in place that can house that fish for its entire life, just stay away from it. Too many bad things can happen. Do we even need to talk about goldfish? I should just be able to say goldfish and that be the end of it. There's no doubt that goldfish are the most mistreated fish in the aquarium hobby. From carnival prizes to small goldfish bowls to just being cast away into a pond or wherever they can be thrown at, they are more mistreated than they are actually cared for. And don't get me started on feeder fish. Goldfish have been treated as a throwaway fish for as long as there's been an aquarium industry. You see these gorgeous goldfish and they have these beautiful fins and they come in different color oranges and whites and well, whatever. They're beautiful and they have big googly eyes and some of them are just so unique and you think, how can they be mistreated? It's just mean. It's sad, but it's true. Even if we got everybody that does videos on YouTube about fish and they talked about all these fish on the list that should be taken care of the right way or they shouldn't be bought or whatever the case may be. We could do all these videos. These could be played on a loop in a fish store over top of a goldfish tank, a glowfish tank, or a shovel nose catfish tank. But you know what? People are still gonna buy these fish and they're gonna do whatever they want. Okay, so in closing, it has to be said, I don't want there to be anyone offended by this video. I know there's probably gonna be people watching this video that have some of the fish that are on the list. I am not saying that you are bad people. I have some of the fish that are on this list. I'm just saying that we all need to do what's right by these fish. We need to do our research and we need to have a system in place that can house these fish forever not just temporary. These are living creatures. We want to make sure that we do what's right by them. So there you go, 10 fish that should not be in aquariums. I hope you were able to get something out of this. If you enjoyed this video, if you found it useful, found it entertaining, why don't you consider subscribing to the channel so that you don't miss any future episodes? We've also got a new series coming out very, very soon. You're gonna wanna check that out. So. Thank you so much for watching, and I look forward to talking to you again next week with 10 more things.